Odd Boy Out, Young Albert Einstein by Don Brown. On a sunny, cold Friday in the old city of Ulm, Germany, a baby named Albert Einstein is born. It is March 14th, 1879. The joy his family has for the new birth is brief. His grandmother cries, much too fat, much too fat. And his mother fears his head is too big. Be patient and all will be well, the doctor insists. And he is right. Although the back of Albert's head will always appear somehow swollen. Albert grows and soon it is time for him to coo and babble and make cute words. But he says nothing. His family frets and waits and frets and waits. Is Albert well? Finally, he talks and when he does, he can be clever and sharp. When he is nearly three, his parents prom promise Albert a surprise and he expects a toy. When instead they present him with a baby sister, he says, where are the wheels? Albert is sometimes cruel to his sister Maya. He nearly hits her with a hard ball and strikes her head with a hoe. Later, Maya would say that one needed a sound skull to be Albert's sister. Poor Maya is not the only object of Albert's anger. Many times when he is displeased, his face pales, his nose goes white, and a nasty tantrum follows. His temper so terrifies a tutor hired to help young Albert prepare for school that she runs away, never to be seen again. But Albert isn't all anger and brooding. To things he enjoys, he brings a single-minded attention. Houses of cards captivate him, and he builds one 14 stories high. A simple compass, a gift from his father, astonishes Albert. He turns it, tilts it, tips it, and yet the gadget's needle always points north. What hidden thing makes it work, he wonders. The Einsteins move to the large city of Munich. There, Albert's parents encourage his independence and take the unusual step of allowing four-year-old Albert to wander the streets unattended. He starts school. Among his classmates, he is an odd boy. The others love to play ball. Albert does not like sports. Soldiers on parade excite the boys. They disturb Albert. And Albert is Jewish, the only one of all the students. Some of his classmates taunt and insult him for it. Young Albert does well in the school subjects and he likes and ignores the others. He likes math, not so Latin and Greek. When questioned in class, Albert lingers over his responses, frustrate, frustrating his teachers who prefer quick, snappy answers. And afterward, the teachers see his lips move as he quietly repeats the answer to himself. Is Albert dull-witted, the teachers wonder? Nevertheless, he earns good grades. At home, he practices the violin, especially the music of Mozart. No tutor is necessary to keep Albert to this task. I believe that love of a subject is a better teacher than a sense of duty, at least for me, he later said. When Albert is 12, his parents invite a medical student named Max Talmud to their home. He and Albert become friends. 
a rare thing for Albert, who later described himself as having the sense of being a stranger with a need for solitude. Max gives young Albert a geometry book, the exact world of shapes, lines, points, and angles is a wonder work to him. After a short time, a few months, he had worked through the whole book. Max later said he thereupon devoted himself to higher mathematics. Soon the flight of his mathematical genius was so high that I could no longer follow. Unlike the charms of math, other schoolwork bores Albert. The mindless and mechanical method of teaching caused me great difficulties, he said. I would rather let all kinds of punishment descend upon me than learn to rattle something off by heart. His disinterest in schoolwork and distant manner irk some of his teachers. Once, one tells Albert he would never get anywhere in life. Albert ignores the teacher's prediction and occupies himself with music and math. He moles puzzlements of his own invention. What would it be like to ride a light beam, he wonders. Would the world appear the same if you raced at light's phenomenal speed? When Albert is about 15, his father's business takes the family to Milan, Italy. But before Albert can leave Germany, the law says he must serve in the military, so he is left behind to first complete high school and then the army. Albert moves into a boarding house. His mood turns black. Albert is miserable at school and longs for the comfort of his family. His happiness and health sink. To recover, he is given special permission to quit school and join the others in Italy. Life is sunny there. Albert has his family, museums to visit, and if, of course, his private study of math. For this, Albert can push everything else from his thoughts, much as he did when he built houses of cards. Even at parties, Albert unravels naughty math problems, unaware of the guests, the talk, and the music. He tries to enroll, enroll in Zurich Polytech, a college in Switzerland. But unprepared in the school subjects he has neglected, Albert fails the entrance test. He spends the next year earning his high school diploma and then enters Polytech and trains to be a scientist. Young Albert graduates and tries to find work teaching at a university, but no job appears. In 1902, he takes the position of expert number three class at the Swiss Patent Office, a kind of government library for new inventions. Albert marries and becomes a father. The duties of family and work do not stop him from puzzling and wondering about math, about light, time, the world, the universe. Sometimes he pushes his baby son's carriage through the streets of Zurich. Like a night sky filled with stars, Albert's mind is bright with glowing ideas. As stars are joined into images called constellations, Albert's ideas make a picture of space and time and energy and matter that no one has ever seen before. Albert says that light is made up of tiny bits of energy called photons that behave like a spray of water from a hose. He says that everything is in motion and when something moves very fast, as fast as light, strange things happen like clocks running slower and objects become shorter. Albert says that something as tiny as a grain of sand is a vessel of unimaginable energy. For scientists, Albert discoveries mean the photoelectric effect, theories of relativity, and E equals mc squared. For the rest of us, his ideas mean automatic door openers, 
television, space travel, and atomic energy. For Albert, his work earns him a great award, the Nobel Prize. He becomes famous, but to him, fame is like the hubbub of his parents' parties, something to be ignored while he enjoys wonders and puzzlements of his own invention. For the world, Einstein becomes comes to mean not fat baby or angry child or odd boy, but great thinker.